morning guys um, right I come back in the van this morning to um, to do day two of um, of this um, vlog series on my hybrid battery bank um, and see how well it'll cope with an AC fridge um, uh, I've got me brew Which is what you need the first thing in the morning. Um, right. So the good news is uh, battery's still on. Inverter's not tripped out. Um, gone and had a look at the battery voltage. Um, on the charge controller, it says 12.5 volts left in the lead acid batteries. Um, on the inverter, it seems to state that it's 12.2, 12.3, so whether you lose a little bit of voltage through the conversion process from AC to DC or, or whatever, or the gauge might not be a little bit accurate. So the fridge is nice and cold. Um, oh, I don't know if you can... That's nice and cold. It's, it's set on... Um, it's set on two like medium settings not the coldest not you know um but also not at the minimum um just a quick side note if i can show you that if you've got a side opening fridge and you get these off amazon ebay all it is is a stick on child lock which you pinch in here and it closes and um they won't open. Uh, absolutely brilliant. So when you go around corners and things like that, you you got no issues. Um, so so far so good. The lead acid batteries are holding up. Um, it's a typical UK cloudy day. So at the moment, my solar panels are literally putting in um, less than one amp back into the batteries. So that's nothing. So um, yeah, I'm sure the batteries will take a bit of a beating today if the sun doesn't come out. So um, I'll come back in in another five hours. Um, check how the batteries are doing. Um, if it falls below 12 volts, I decided for the sake of the test, if it falls below 12 volts, um, I'm going to swap it over to the lithium phosphate batteries because I don't want to damage the batteries. So um, yeah, I'll, um, I'll see you in five hours. So it's 12.20, um, I'm back in the van and um, <coughs> turn this around so we can get a decent view of it. Um, I didn't think it was um, a particularly true test of um, your battery bank and your inverters and, and everything else just running one 240 appliance. So what I've decided to do is get out this 800 watt oven um and keep the fridge running while i'm running this it's just plugged into uh, an extension lead that's run to um basically another extension lead so you've got an extension lead running to an extension lead which isn't really the best thing to do and then the oven's plugged into that so it's set to uh, we'll do it for 210 to we won't set it to maximum we'll set it to 200 all right so it's going to be set to 200 uh, the fridge is running um, the lead acid battery is on 12.5 
8 volts all right so we're going to switch it on we're going to preheat the oven the fans come on immediately on the inverter bear in mind this is between 1500 and 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter and what we're going to do is we're going to cook some oven chips now in a normal oven these take about 20 minutes and I have cooked um, I have cooked before in a bigger version of this oven and it takes about 40 minutes to do chips but this is a slightly different oven it seems to have a couple of elements at the top where my big oven's only got one so we're going to preheat the oven um, to give the batteries a real test it's raining outside there's no sun so I'm getting absolutely no power coming in I'm getting 1.2 amps oh, that's actually pretty good um, so I'm getting 1.2 amps coming from the 100 watt solar panel to this battery bank so this is a lead acid one All right um, now if the voltage on the battery drops below 11.2 everything it will everything will cut off the inverter will cut off because the solar power controller has um, disconnected um, itself um, so basically everything shuts off to protect the battery from being completely discharged so we're going to preheat the oven um, I'll show you my other oven, uh, just so you've got a um, an idea of where it is. So uh, that is the other oven. It's permanently mounted up there, um, and it's got a heat shield up, uh, around it. So it's got metal, quite thick um, steel, all the way around it, which protects it. It's not actually the biggest oven in the world, but it does come in handy and we use it a lot um, not the best uh, not really the best thing for off-grid you know that's the reason why people use gas but this little oven 800 watts it could really do the job you know it could be a, a nice little compromise between the big one and the little one so what I'm going to do is um, I'm going to switch off the camera and then we're going to come back in, um, we'll put the chips in now, they're ready. Put the chips in. Let's see that, put the chips in. So then we'll come back in a bit. Um, and we'll see how the batteries are doing, how the chips are doing, and how much power I've got left in the batteries. Bearing in mind, the fridge has been on now for nearly 24 hours. Um, not not quite 24 hours. The fridge has been on for 18 hours. It got um, it got switched on at six o'clock last night. Um, so there wasn't a lot of sun about. Obviously, there's been no sun this morning because it's been raining. So yeah, we'll we'll see how the chips get on, and then um, I'll video it. See what they taste like. See if they take longer than what the packet says they normally do we'll see how much power we've got left in the batteries so I'll see you in a bit right chips have been on for I don't know between 10 and 15 minutes doesn't really uh, make too much of a difference how long they've been on for you know you always know when chips are ready because you taste them and when they're nice and crispy you get them out but so far Inverter's holding up well, batteries are holding up well, it's dropped to two it's dropped to twelve volts. Inverter's coming on all the time. Literally on off, on off, on off. Where the fans kicking in. So I'm gonna get my chips out, see how long they need, see if they're cooked. Mmm. Mmm. That's some good chip, man. Very good. Cook nice and quick. So I'm gonna give them an extra couple of minutes. 
and then they're going to be done and then I'm going to pop well <laughs> okay. I'm going to pop a bit of salt on them have my chips and then um, switch the oven off and then leave the fridge for a few more hours come back in check it out maybe make a cup of coffee with the um, with the kettle because uh, again that's a much better test of the battery's capability and the system as a whole rather than just running the fridge so um, I'll come back in a bit right so we're back again those chips are definitely done now they cook super quick this is a much much better oven um, than my other one it's a Oopla Oopla 800 watt oven absolutely brilliant uses a lot less power than my my big one and it cooks chips better which is generally what the kids live on when we go camping so so that's good right so we're going to get that out put that to the side so switch our oven off that's the oven off inverter immediately switches off shoots straight back up over to 12 volts now put a bit of um, put a bit of salt on there So far, um, my lead acid part of the battery bank is holding up really well. Um, it's uh, it's coping really, really well. Let's just pop that there. Um, you know, I only thought it was going to last maybe maybe a day. Um, but at the moment, at the moment, might even get two days out of the lead acid batteries before I need to swap over to the lithium, which would be absolutely amazing. Um, coped much better than I thought it would. Hmm, good chips. Absolutely amazed by that little oven. Very, very good. Oh my god. The best chips ever. Mm. Right. So, back up to 12.9 volts on the lead acid. So, the batches have recovered pretty much straight away from having the oven on. Um, not the best place for the oven that's why I like my other one because it's up out of the way away from the kids and they can't get hurt that's not really the best place to have that but I got that off of um, my dad who didn't want it and it's turned out to be an absolutely brilliant little oven so oh the fridge has just come on the press has just come on so right you don't want to watch me eat my chips so I'm gonna eat my chips and I'll catch up with you later on so far Fridge test going well, lead acid batteries going well. No need to switch over to the lithium at the moment and the new cooker. Brilliant, much better um, energy usage than my big one and it cooks the chips better and the inverter copes with its fine. So, so far, brilliant all round. How are we doing guys? Right, back in the van again for um, continuation of my week long test on my fridge and inverters. Um, so it's officially been 24 hours now of using my batteries, my lead acid batteries, while running my AC appliances so that's running a normal oven normal fridge freezer um, I'm gonna make a brew in a minute 
with um, a normal kettle. Um, this one is a 800 to 900 watt kettle, so it's a reasonably low watt kettle, so it doesn't take forever to um, boil some water. Um, batteries are holding up. I mean, I don't know whether you can hear that, but it's absolutely pissing down with rain outside. So I'll be surprised if I'm getting any power in at all from my solar. Getting 0.2 amps coming in. That is pretty much um, nothing at all. Um, and batteries are holding up all right. They're at 12.6 still. The fridge is still on. I've actually turned the fridge up a little bit because um, um, the batteries just seem to be holding up really well, even though they're not brand new batteries. Um, inverter's not too hot. All the wiring seems perfectly fine. You know, um, no no hot spots on the wires or anything like that. All the terminals. Nothing's getting particularly hot. So what I'm going to do is I am going to fill my kettle up and um, pop it pop it on. Give the uh, bit of a noisy pump, I'm afraid. Um, I'm going to put the kettle on um, and uh, boil the kettle. See if we can take a little bit more power out of the batteries and then basically come back tomorrow uh, on um, day two and um, and see what power is left. Let's switch it off. Right, so we've got a bit of water in the kettle. I'll quickly switch it on. There we get on. Right, so we'll pop that on. So 900 watt kettle, 2000 watt inverter. Uh, I have no idea what what the fridge is. Um, I've I've never tested it, but they usually have a surge rating of something like 1500 watts refrigerators, and then the wattage drops right down um, once the compressors um, switches off. So. Um, so kettle's taking kettle's taking the power down to um, 12 volts, um, 12 volts, 11.9. So it is it is taking a bit of power out of the batteries, the kettle. But you know, it's just a normal kettle. Um, and then uh, I think what I'm going to do is I was going to run the lead acid for one more day but it's supposed to be peeing down with rain all week so I'm not going to get a lot of sunshine and I don't want to run my batteries too low I don't think it's a good idea to take them below 12 volts um, so that's down to 11.7 now, 11.6. But the kettle is is really um, giving the, the battery the batteries a bit of a beating. So, but that's going to click off in a minute. So 11.6, 11.6, So it's coming to the boil now. Good thing. Because it's nearly a thousand watt kettle, you don't have to wait forever to boil. You know, I've got no gas in the van at all. There's no, there's no gas for the oven. No gas for the fridge. There's no propane. There's nothing like that. Everything is run um, off of electrics, um, and I just think that is a is a safer way to go um, when you've got a big family and dogs. Um, running around and you know I don't want pipes being knocked off and things being damaged so right the kettle's clicked off so we'll switch that off that's bounced back up to 12.4 volts so it's recovered it's recovered fine so 
we'll leave it we'll leave it for another day we'll come back tomorrow tomorrow afternoon and see how we're doing um, but so far day one over and done with into day two and um, yeah test continues can we go seven days off grid with this hybrid battery bank of, of lithium and lead acid I didn't think I would get seven days out of it I really didn't but it could surprise me you know um, and maybe that's an affordable option for people if they've got some you know if they've got some decent lead acid batteries lying around leisure batteries which they don't want to just get rid of and ditch then maybe they can use them in conjunction with their lithium batteries I think it's a good idea personally but um, yeah, stay tuned for day two and see how we get on. See you soon.